Oh, that's why they can't hear me. Okay. They should be able to hear me now. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Chair Grot, and this is the Weirdcast. Welcome to the Tuesday evening AOS stream. We are back from the Slambo GT, and we got a couple of guests here that are ready to talk about their experiences, and I'm going to pass it off to our hosts, Lexi and Joe, and they're going to have a couple of questions for our guests. Are you guys ready? I am ready. It's very weird, like, watching it delayed massively. Okay, so, hey guys, how's everyone doing tonight? I'm back. Welcome back, Joe. Thank you. I'm you ever, doing uh... well. Yeah, yeah. Randy, doing well? Who do you Guys, Chris... You're great. Nice. Dimitri, don't have a video, but got a lovely panel. Yeah, some video problem on, with the laptop, but I'm here. Oh, that's fine. He's too tired to from slaying giants all weekend, so he's taking a break from video. Right? Me and technology equals three. <laughs> right. Good okay. Human tech. All right. So, we got a couple topics prepared. I think we've sent them out just so everyone could take a quick look just to kind of get an idea of the questions we'll be asking. So I'm going to start it off. Um, I'll start with Brian there in the bottom left. So what were your expectations going into Slambo? Where did you place? Did you think you would have done better or worse than you did? Uh, so, I mean, going into this, I had been out of the GT scene for about a year, working behind the scenes last season. So this is my first GT in over a year. Uh, so I kind of want to take something I knew a little bit, something a little easier. You know, giants, big brains, but they're all smooth. So I went in with a pretty decent giant list uh, using the new a um, AOR with King's Broad Stop. And it was something that was the components I was familiar with, uh, but I had I was going in pretty much blind, having not played the AOR. Uh, and there's a couple intricacies that I probably should have practiced before going to the GT. But I was just going to have fun, knock off the rust, and just have a good time. Uh, overall, it did okay. Uh, I ended up being 3-2. Uh, and I placed about midfield. So I placed 30 out of, uh, what, 65 participants. Mm -hmm. So it was okay. I was really going to have a good time, drink some beer, have some fun with my friends. All I right. Much accomplished that goal. That's not bad. First time back in a while, and you land basically middle of the pack. I... I wish I could be so lucky, considering I haven't missed many GTs. I'll talk about this later, but I'm pretty sure it could have gone 5-0 if not for a blood curse from a certain community bloodthirster. Oh yeah, no, we'll uh, we'll definitely talk about that problem later. Uh, we're going to spin it around clockwise. Randy, how'd you place? Did you think you would land there? And yeah, let me see. What you got for me? What is he? What is he? What is he? Cool and Zinish eat glee. So they did some the special, the 41. The 41. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think they were at the fifth place. Mm -hmm. Turns Thank out, <laughs> ghost not tasty. <laughs> Thank you, Swedish chef Randy. So we'll spin it over to Chris Long. So, same question. How'd you do? Did you think you'd get there? Um, you know, I I, uh, I ended up going uh, four and one. I got eighth place. Um, I guess I felt like I was going to do pretty well going into it. You know, I been playing Giants a long time, and, you know, you get a couple give me battle tactics, a few five-up wards, like it's the beginning of the edition again. It's pretty nice. So, uh, I don't know if I thought I'd get top ten, but... Um, I, I feel good about where I ended up for sure. All right. <clears throat> I mean, all uh, all four of you placed pretty well. So, Dimitri, we're going to drop down to you. Where'd you come up, and did you expect to land there? Uh no, not at all. <laughs> I, was, I think I had good matchups. I mean, I hadn't been at a GT in like six months, 
Mm -hmm. uh, I did a couple of practice game and I was getting waffle stomp <laughs> at the local mm -hmm. store. So, but uh, yeah, I guess it, I ended up doing pretty well. So it's good. And All I managed right. to get my video and my audio working on my laptop. Yeah. Nice. Look at that. So from the four of you, we have three, four, and ones, and one, three, two. I think those are all fantastic winning records. Randy was even game five playing undefeated, uh, potentially to take the whole event. So <clears throat> what you guys did honestly worked out. It was really spectacular to see our club do so well at that event. We didn't win it, but, you know. Houston brings a lot of really good players, and those guys are hard to beat. Houston kind of comes with numbers, um, and they're all good. So they're, they're about, what, five or six clubs now uh, underneath the Grand Houston Alliance. They're all very competitive. So when they come to events, they come to really just swamp them. even. Right? So, I mean, still in place, but he's been practicing with us a lot. So, I mean... He's a weird ape. Right? The... The only hybrid allowed in all of Texas, Dylan, one of the uh, one of the five O's at the event. So I'm gonna kind of say Austin was somewhere up there at the top tables for the win. Ooh, Dylan may disagree. Ooh, it's ooh, 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 ooh. Right. All right. So <clears throat> let's jump down to our next question. Okay. Wait. So why don't we what? ask you that question? Me. Because I'm hosting, and me, I need something to talk about on Thursday when we do a hobby stream. But more about that at the end of this end of the stream. So, right? So losing's easy. Winning's really the hardest part of the game. So, what was our toughest matches? Uh, I'm going to start with Chris, and we'll go clockwise win. So, Chris, what was your toughest match at this event? Uh, I mean, I would have to say it was probably uh, our clubmate Eli round five with the with the croak NATO. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, that uh, he's been playing that a long time, and uh, it brings a lot to the table. So that was definitely a really tough matchup. Yeah. Um, was there anything about Eli's list into your list into Broad Stomp that gave you a lot of trouble, or was it? his skill piloting the list um i would say it's it, it, i i would i would put it more down to his skill i'd say as far as as seraphon themselves and especially his version with starborn um i had a lot kind of going for me uh with the broad stomp as far as having you know five up ward against mortals artifact five up ward on broad um that was i was able to mitigate a lot of his damage okay um also being able to remove impassable terrain that he was hiding behind uh, and, and not letting me charge him, and then I could do it. So that was good. Um, but it was mostly just his, his skill. He, he's really solid with that list. So, Oh, yeah. he's uh, He's been on that Seraphon grind all third edition, and he's been loving his new book. Uh, Lexi, do me a quick favor. Um, give me a little bit of a mic check. I need you to speak up for a moment. Yeah. Can you actually hear me? Yes, we can. He's trying to work out some of the technical things. I know. It's fun. <laughs> Thank you, Lex. All right. So, Dimitri, let's drop down to you. You brought Gits, and it was a squig based, squig focused list. What was your toughest matchup this week? Uh, well, out of all the Sons of BMF I got to face over the weekend, uh, the broad list was the scariest. Uh -huh. So that was that was definitely the one I felt uh, most uncomfortable, uncomfortable facing. So Chris kind of mentioned it: multiple wards, healing. Um, did any of those kind of play into factor of why you had such a hard time going into broads? Well, the, the the terrain, the fact that they just destroyed the terrain. I mean, my my tactic against the sons of the MFs typically plays terrain and try to put corridors or places they can't go and that list can just destroy all that and so they're playing on a level field. Yeah. Um, 
long shanks carrying about terrain that's four inches or higher, stopping their movement, when they can just throw that piece of terrain that's stopping them out of the way. It uh, kind of makes the Gargant uh, kind of play a little bit more difficult. Oh, Chris, I am getting a, a DM for you. Did you throw Eli's Pyramid? Uh, yeah, that actually kind of that sealed the game. Basically, he had uh, he had Croak and his other Slon uh, in the corner behind the pyramid where I, I literally couldn't charge them. Uh, so then, you know, I, I grabbed the pyramid, you know, chunked it, and you know, killed some. I think most of his guard charged in, killed the frogs. So yeah, that was that was really nice. Didn't you like, uh, rude. I just I think I just spoiled one of my other answers. Actually, Thanks. oh, <laughs> didn't you do seventeen wounds to like one random dude? Oh. Uh, there were two, uh, in two different games, there were uh, Skink Starseers that took, uh, you know, 15 plus damage from terrain pieces uh, to meet their end. One time it got me a battle tactic, so that was especially nice. <laughs> oh, Gargans. Way more fun than they should be. I don't like it. So, Brian, we're going to slide over to you. Toughest game all weekend. Let's hear it. I, mean, I really felt like, uh, other than some bad dice, I had most of my games like in hand. Uh, they would have gone my way if not for like bad rolls. But game two, I was pretty much taken to school. Uh, I was up against Chris Creech with his Knight of the Imperial Throne list, and the man comes at you with a binder. Uh, and he had a lot of things that worked for him to fight Gargants uh, with Baron Guard. Uh, being able to fight twice, he was able to easily lift Gargants. Uh, while also running Mark of Nurgle Knights. So he was very good. On top of that, the chair on top is he has Bellicor. So he just shut down Broad in a very important turn. So I was pretty much tabled by turn two. Really? Okay. All right. That that sounds like a hard game. Bellicor uh, doesn't show up often in the current meta, although that might be changing. Uh, but when he does, and when that Dark Master starts, get, starts mastering, it's uh, it's rough when you have yeah. four models. He had a list that really could control the battlefield with his uh, three six charge, uh, with along with the run and charge. He was able to choose his engagements where he wanted to, and basically just pick off gargants. Uh, it was a really well constructed list, and he played it very well against me. All right, all right. So there you go. Watch out for Creech and his uh, his Knights of the Empty Throne. That uh, faction isn't in balance at all. All right, so Randy, up to you. You, uh, there was I. I mean, you only lost one game, but was that the hardest, or was it one of the ones you won? Let's hear it. Oh no 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 no! Uh, the the Kel, mm, Mishy did the right. Mm, mm. <clears throat> the hardest game. Mm, 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 oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, the hardest game. Um, that would be. Uh, it's going to be uh, the game for against uh, Nick Swope and his Slanesh. Okay. Um, Ice Fields is really, really, really a tough map for what I was playing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing 3d6 charges and I need to clear the longboard. And uh, he had a bunch of shooting and wasn't walking toward me. I, I did more damage to myself in that game than he did to me, um, but it really made everything I did in that game was hard. Um, it was um, like there, there was nothing came easy there. It, it was uh, that was by far the most difficult. And, and a lot. And Nick not only played it well, but the map itself was just really savage. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but my game against Kel, it came down to a priority roll, two to three. If I win that priority roll, I think I blow him out. Um, and, you know, we both kind of looked at that priority roll and said, whoever wins this is winning the game. Um, and that's kind of how it went. Mm -hmm. No, that's uh, that makes sense. That was uh, one of the later games through round five. Of course, you know, we're playing at top tables. Everyone wants to mind their P's, mind their Q's, get their three inches, three inches. So that makes sense. So... <clears throat> Speaking about maps, at Slambo every year, they kind of do their own thing. So 
every map that we played, with the exception of, I think it was game five, was from the current GHB, but had a small twist involved. Did everyone remember those twists through the event? Or were they just kind of like a convenience thing? Like, uh, when we played Ice Fields, you could have one model run per turn without risking the mortal wounds. Um, Randy, you t- finished it. We'll let you start. How did the twist goes? Did you remember them? I, 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 I knew they were there, um, but they didn't. They weren't transformative on the game maps like they had been at Slambos in the past. Like oh. um, and and for most of the games, uh, I think on Ice Fields, I remembered that one a number of times. Um, but on the other maps, they they didn't really play into how you how my game plan wanted to play those games. Uh-huh. Um, so I, I it didn't come up a lot. I think at the very end of my game against Kel, I remembered the Slambo rule and I rerolled a run roll. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> to try to score a battle tactic it, it, it just they they just weren't as, as impactful as they have been in the past and i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing right it's those missions are fairly well balanced um so uh, you know big heavy twists like previously in the pinata match where it was like you got extra victory points for hitting the pinata that was such a game swing mechanic mm-hmm. that uh it was too much so i think this felt better i mm-hmm. think those who leaned into these mechanics really got a lot more out of them mm-hmm. um so i i wasn't unhappy with them. i thought they were fine um they just weren't all that impactful to the individual games okay what about you chris uh did any of the twists this year kind of stick out to you or did you get an awesome moment of utilizing those um well i'd say game one and two they weren't too relevant but i think in game three four and five they all had their moments and game three especially i would say it was important um, being able to activate that third objective when only two are activated, that that significantly changes the dynamics of that mission. Mm-hmm. Um, so that one, I would say, is pretty important. Um, mm-hmm. And then, of course, uh, the game five Slambo reroll. I mean, you got to love that. Uh, oh, yeah. I've used that, I've used that every year. Uh, so so that's always nice. I think this year I used it to uh, successfully reroll a charge, actually, and uh, save a command point for uh, still getting to all-out defense. So. Okay, yeah. all right. That's good to hear. What about you, Dimitri? I always seem to forget the twists, so it seemed irrelevant to me. Uh, mm-hmm. I've used a little bit that uh, that second wind in uh, was that game four, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was useful to avoid killing those uh, little four wound uh, goblin heroes, but um, when they were running, yeah. But uh, yeah, besides that, I, I think they were, for me, they were mostly irrelevant. Okay. What about you, Brian? Uh, so I didn't really need to use them a lot. Uh, after game game one and two, I kind of got shut down. Uh, game three, four, or five, I was the one pretty much shutting them down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do remember using the Slambo reroll, but it was for something silly like rerolling a uh, like a rock hit thrown by a gatebreaker. At that point, I pretty well had the game in hand. So they weren't super impactful for me. I think even uh, game four, we had mostly forgotten that we could, you know, avoid the mortals uh, by using that. Mm-hmm. But it is what it is. I do like the changes overall this year. Um, as Randy said, I think they're just a little bit, they're flavorful while not basically going overboard so you definitely see like uh ryan's hand working on those mm-hmm. no that's awesome um although leave it to a gargant player to be like uh you know I, the re-roll and the four damage boulder not that big of a deal so that's good to hear funny, um, funny enough the the character survived so you know <laughs> okay maybe it wasn't a big deal I re- so what the way the role went uh, is my opponent he uh, he was Mark Johnson and he is a f- he's a 14 year old son of Slambo, mm-hmm. a brother of Jack Johnson and he <laughs> he talks the most shit in any game so we were having fun <laughs> talking shit back and forth and he's like you're gonna roll a one and he manifested the one I re rolled it into a six gave mm-hmm. him that look like oh your your admiral's about to get smashed and mm-hmm. then rolled to wound then rolled that one back again. Okay, all right, that's awesome. Sounds like a fun, fun little uh, interaction there. 
so was good stuff. He was very happy about it. <laughs> all right. So we have three four ones and a three two. So those are great scores, and carrying those scores through an entire season in Texas is actually very difficult. We have a, I wouldn't say cutthroat, but you got to be hard in Texas, okay? You, you can't be soft. It, it's a difficult field here. So how do we, as players, plan to repli uh, replicate that success or improve on that going forward through the remainder of this Texas master season? And Dimitri, we'll kind of start off with you, seeing how this was your first time back. Can you do it again this year? I don't know if I can do it again, but uh, I think stick with the army for a while, uh, making small changes. I mean, I was last time I'd done a GT with with that army was uh, the Smash and Bash in back mm -hmm. in May, and I think I went two three. And I did a bit of tweak, changed the sub faction, and replaced some uh, some stabas for some boing guards, mm -hmm. and and that did that did some big changes to the list. Uh, in addition to the GHB changing, mm -hmm. so small increments, mm -hmm. and uh, and play. Okay, what about you, Brian? Um, broad stomp is I'm not going to say solved, but it's. You know, you two played the same list. You and Chris played, you know, essentially the same list. Um, is that the broad stomp list? Can you do more? Uh, no. Um, despite it looking like I curbed uh, Chris's notes, um, I really took it because it's what I like, right? I like the big damagey gargants that are very, very direct. But I think taking a Kraken Eater would be uh, just as effective in this list. That'll give you a little more flexibility on the objectives, give you a little bit more range damage, and give you uh, some answer to some of the threats that we generally face. Something like, for instance, Chris's Knights, I could have plucked that banner out, and then no longer I am minus one to wound. And that would have solved that issue. Yeah. Um, so I don't say it's solved. Um, giants in general are somewhat flexible in the sense that you can basically take whatever you want, and it's going to be okay. Uh, they mm -hmm. just have matchups that they're better against and matchups that they have uh, tr trouble with because if you can meet that damage check and you start losing a Gargan a turn, you're going to feel it real hard. Yeah, no, that that makes a lot of sense. And that's, you know, as every non-Gargan player tell you, the sauce is kill a Gargan a turn. So right. there we go. All right, Randy, you've been on this thing now for, got it, it really does feel like half a year. So well, a year now. Almost a year on this thing. Is is this it? Um, do you go further with this idea of Kragnos and his meat missiles? Or do we retire this for something else? Um, this list is a ton of fun. It's a meme with legs, and uh, it's not supposed to be any good. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's such a ridiculous list, and it attacks the game in such a way that... Uh, like the game right now is all about abusing action economy and mm -hmm. this list attacks action economy by not taking extra attacks, but basically getting a combat phase in the charge phase. Yeah. So uh, it, it, it's really hard to set up counterplay that doesn't involve an extreme amount of risk. And uh, so uh, I think with this list here, uh, I'm probably not going to play it anymore you know, uh, for Texas Masters, but I will, I'm probably taking it to LVO because it fits in the bag. Um, I mean, <laughs> that's a perfectly good reason to take um, an army to LVO. But uh, yeah, I, I want to do some more experimentation with uh, some of the new Stormcast stuff, and uh, uh, I don't think there's anything left to prove with this. I mean, the meme's gone 4 1 three times, um, yeah. losing to the tournament winner and two of those three. So um, I think I'm okay with that. It, again, it's so much fun to play that. If somebody, if Houston shows up in Austin for a local, it's probably coming out. Yeah. Well, uh, there you go, folks. Uh, Randy says it's time to put it away. He does it with a heavy heart, and everyone else in the community will lead, let out a big sigh of relief. I mean, it got beat quite a bit in playtesting and at tournaments and stuff, but I think it, everybody entered that game with me terrified, mm -hmm. which is how I kind of wanted it. Yeah. I've played that list enough. I don't want to be at the same table as it. <laughs> All right, Chris. Um, you have been 
rocking Gargants all third edition. Uh, I believe longer. I haven't played since before third. And I kind of view you as the resident local giant player uh, just because of the consistency that you play that army. What do you do? Where are you going from here? Yeah, so it's just, yeah, it's been third edition, uh, n- not second edition at all. But I think, you know, for for tournaments, I'll probably stick with the Giants, you know, for the rest of this edition, assuming we get a new edition next summer, and then probably transition to something. That's usually when I make big army switches is kind of big between editions for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, in the meantime, I might be transitioning at least, maybe not for tournament play, but at least for some casual play, playing some cities, you know, probably still with a Giant in there, but but, you know humans for the most part okay um but uh but as far as as far as you know tournament lists go you know i'll probably stick with the broad stomp uh i probably do some play testing with four gate breakers uh since those fit in 2k now and i've been uh enticed and haven't pulled the trigger a number of times so i'll probably play around with that a little bit um, okay cool. all right that's good to hear um i don't at least from our cast here, it looks like the new armies of renown that GW has, I'm not going to say, you know, come up with these basically just scream, you know, second edition battalions to me, but it looks like they've breathed some new and somewhat healthy life into, I'm not going to say stale armies, but armies that could use a little bit of a shakeup. All right, so... Really? Mouth breathers? That's what they're for? You know what? No, I'm not going to take this bait. I will. I'll take the bait. Brian, don't be jealous, my friend. Uh, You, too, can throw a literal house at your opponents. Come over, play some giants. It'll be great. You can be as drunk as you want and still win games. (laughs) You can reach for your terrain to throw it and accidentally throw your giant. That would be perfect. I mean, up until, like, two weeks ago, you could reach for your terrain and throw your giant. (laughs) <laughs> all right so we're kind of not halfway through but i think we're at a good point where i'm going to jump to more kind of personal questions targeted directly at kind of the players so let me scroll down and let me see what i got here so brian um in high school sometimes you got to lean over and copy your friend's homework Seeing how you uh, leaned over and copied someone's list, are are you and Chris kind of doing a thing now? Can we expect, you know, like a doubles, you know, mirror thing from y'all? Look, man, uh, Chris has been playing Giants consistently. I figured he knew what he was going to do, but uh, really it's just uh, we, we like the same things out of the Giants. Um, I've been consistently running... Uh, as many gate breakers I fit in a list with a beast uh, smasher. That's my kind of MO for tournaments, what I like. It's very direct, very punchy. Um, but, I mean, if you want to play in the narrative, absolutely. I, I did it to piss off Chris because he refused to play me a giant on giant game. I want to suplex him in the dirt. Prove my <laughs> superiority. You know, I uh, I love it. Watching you play, well, watching you both essentially bring two gate breakers on a cron spine for a while that was uh that was good times i'm glad to see y'all are at it again so well i guess see i'm already on you brian so let's kind of stick with that you played broad stomp um you kind of getting back into the scene with that army of renown do you think with its most recent like FAQs to the frisbee teleporting, whatever we want to call it. Do you think this army of renown is at a healthy spot for competitive play at two day GTs? Uh, I think it's very strong. It does a lot of things, right? Being able to manipulate the board state itself, something no army can do quite like this, being able to just remove terrain and come at people from, from angles that they can't really prepare for, because unless you roll that one, they're going to, the giants are going to come right down your throat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's really strong. It's fairly unique. Uh, giants, since their inception, have had the ability to interact with the battlefield in a way that throws people off because no one else can do it, whether it's kicking objectives or uh, removing mass models, uh, or in this case, you know, throwing a literal house at them. Okay, wonderful. Or a big, so, house. Or a big house. A brick house? Very large house. Wonderful. All right, 
Lexi, why don't you uh, why don't you take those questions for Randy? Oh, I would love to. Oh my. I was stressing up as a Swedish chef. Well, I mean, I was playing ogres. Um, and uh, you know, there's 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 kind of a thing that you should always play armies that look like you. Um, and so ogres fit the bill for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but rather than you know taking my shirt off for everybody to really fit the bill, I figured it would be better to put on a uh, you know. To, to, to really lean into this, we're really, really hungry, and we're going to eat our opponents by um, by having um, some fake Swedish um, inform on that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, plus, you know, I, I, this is not the first time I've done something like this, so I, I always love dressing up for tournaments and playing into the narrative as much as possible, even though I guess my reputation is uh, somewhat different. But... Uh, <laughs> Um, I'm always looking to have a good time, and when you have a tournament right after Halloween, you're probably going to catch me in costume. Mm -hmm. yeah, I appreciate every it. Every but... minute of it, and it was great to see the chicken. <laughs> uh, chicken's around here somewhere. Okay, yeah, anyway. so what are your plans now that you're throwing out the ogres? Well, I'm not going to throw the, ne the ogres necessarily out. Um, there's some stuff I want to do with... Uh, with uh, the Gitz Regiment of Renown in Ogres, there's some fun stuff that can happen from there. Um, I've terrorized uh, a number of Catacroses with Mesmerize while charging it with Stonehorns. That's that's fun. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I think now I really want Stormcast to be good. I really want to play some dragons again. Um, people hate dragons, and I love it when people hate the armies that I play. Um, so uh, I might play some Stormcast. Picked up Gitz on a Lark, so I may give that a shot too. Um, I have to see what Feck does. Feck, uh, the, the idea behind Flesh Eater Courts um, and how they play the game is right up my alley. Mm -hmm. They charge, and then they eat. More right. Swedish chef. Well, I agree. I think it's going to be very interesting, especially since they're releasing Feck and Bretonia almost like side by side. Gives you a lot of conversion opportunities. Right. So, Sounds like Lexi's still having some issues with her mic. So kind of jumping off of Gitz over to Dimitri, where do you think Gitz kind of sit in the meta? And are you kind of happy where they are at right now in the game? Yeah, I think they're in a really good spot. I mean, they were, they were definitely like undercosted when they got released. And but I think they're in a good spot now. I mean, uh, they're very strong. They have easy battle tactics, mm -hmm. and they can they can do a lot of damage and have lots of wounds on the table and uh, a strong presence. I don't know. So, uh, yeah. One of the things that gets me with Gets is one second. One of the things that gets me with Gets is how mobile that army is, and. We're talking like the whole army, except for the heroes who just want to stand by the loon shrine. Um, Gitz is going to throw, you know, 1500 points at you across the board at light speed. Uh, I like it. Have you have you been using Scragrot to manipulate the moon, or are you just kind of rolling the dice and seeing what's happening? Yeah, I've, I've used Scragrot. Uh... Always, uh, yeah, it's army, it's so fast. I mean, it, rem it reminds me of my old bone splitters, you know, the previous book. And I had like uh, armies, and you had like that movement spell, and you'd go directly on the other side of the board, turn one, oh. and gets pretty much do that. So, and those oh. poor bone splitters, they don't do anything like that nowadays, <laughs> right? I mean, let's be honest, they're probably not going to be doing anything in a AOS here soon, yeah, unfortunately. Well, so another thing for you, Dimitri, you've uh, you've been playing Warhammer now for a very long time. And with all of the kind of spoilers for Old World, are you excited for that system? Oh, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm, I've got some Bretonian on the painting table, even though I have more than I need to play an army. So. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, are you going to be getting the lady? Oh, absolutely. We'll get all the new models and probably get models I already have. Just yeah. The box. Yeah. 
<laughs> I I'm very excited for the lady. I don't know if she's going to get me to play old world, but uh, GW is at least going to get me to buy that model. Yep, she's really pretty. <laughs> Isn't Tom King's also so the old world or? Oh God, she's killing me. <laughs> I recognize uh, that accent. Right, uh, Chris, up to you. So we were checking the rubrics and the scoring for the event, and you maxed your paint scores. And you were very, very close to one of the hobby awards. Are you planning to do anything in that realm of hobbying? Uh, maybe going back over your gargants or a new display board or something else? Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm usually, you know, I always do something, you know, for my giants, you know, bringing the same army to tournaments all the time. I end up kind of doing more work on them constantly. But also kind of has to be something where where inspiration strikes. Um, I mean, I I guess uh, the thing I could that I could see doing potentially would be, you know, going back um, and and bringing more depth into the skin tone. Um, you know, some more red undertones to to the to the dark skin. Mm -hmm. um, kind of bring a little bit more more life to it in, in that way. Um, yeah, I think I think that's probably probably where I would go uh, hobby wise. Um, okay. But you know, I'm really happy with those giants. I've been working on them a long time, and you know, they 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 uh, reliably do pretty well in that category. Yeah, no, they. Um, <clears throat> I've I've wa I've watched your giants now for over two years, and you know, from five or five or six tables away, they look black. But once you kind of get up close to them and really look, there's a lot of depth and warmth in your army. And you've gone in and done like amazing detailing on all the little extra bits that you've added to all those gargants. And <clears throat> kind of talking about hobby scores and talking about that, um, there was some amazing armies and ideas on display at Slambo. Um, I think we had some fantastic hobby armies on these tables. And you know, just kind of a quick, you know, question to each of you. Did any one army at the event kind of jump out to you as a fun new take on an old idea or, you know, kind of schoolhouse stuck to the fundamentals and built up a really solid foundation for an army? So, Chris, we're on you. We'll start it off with you. Did anything jump out to you? Um, I mean, as far as something that was a little bit non-traditional, I would say the army uh, that one player's choice, the uh, the Sylvaneth army, I think was was very nicely done, and you know you don't see uh, trees kind of in that kind of ice and blue theme very often, so that that was definitely one that that popped out uh, to me for sure. That was yeah. Patrick Billups' army. There we go. Uh, somewhere in the slideshow, amongst the like fifteen slides of me losing, there's a picture of his Alariel. Um, so pay attention to that. You'll see a very blue, immaculately, uh, highlighted Alariel in there. So <clears throat> down to Dimitri, any army that jumped out to you, go. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the level of painting is, was great. I mean, it's been just better and better in Texas and it's, it's amazing right now. Uh, mm -hmm. There were a lot of different armies that were really like caught my eyes, uh, mm -hmm. from the level, from the the theme. Uh, you know, I mean, Nina had an interesting take with her like black demonets for hedonets mm -hmm. of Slanesh. Mm -hmm. That was that was good. She always does really well. Mm -hmm. All right. What about uh? What about you, Brian? What jumped out to you? So the the first army I play uh, is Devin Courtney's army. Uh, he's running Big Wall, and he has a really interesting synth wave take to Orcs, uh, where he basically combined eighties, uh, those glasses of Gurren Logan, and bright bright colors. Uh, and you just look over across them, and you're just like, wow, this army just pops. And uh, it, it just gives you that 80s nostalgia feel uh, while it's like running uh, six pigs into your face. Which question? Whichever question you guys want to throw next. 
All right. Sorry. Still dealing with technical issues behind the scenes, but Randy, up to you. Take it away. Um, so I, I saw Patrick's uh, Sylvanath Army. That really stood out to me as um, there was a lot of really good uh, color choice there. With The highlighting was what, like, it caught your eye because it was so bright and he nailed it. It was very, very clean. So I really enjoyed his. Um, and I definitely got to call out uh, uh, our own Joshua. Um, his Stormcast Army. Every time he brings that thing out, it, it it's Stormcast, so it always doesn't always catch the eye, but that army is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I wish he brought it out more. Yeah, no, I uh, I love uh, Kennedy's army. Well, I, I love Stormcast models. I will always take time to kind of go over and look at other Stormcast and, armies. And there were some other Stormcasts there that I really, really enjoyed. I think uh, Yujo had a chariot that was just beautifully done. Oh yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> I don't even think I had shows. A... Well, shut up, Lex. Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, so, speaking of Stormcast, David Rodriguez, um, I love his uh, his Karazai, and his army is fantastically painted. But his display board had like these little purple crystals, and he just kind of went in. Just like did a little OSL with like these purple crystals and brought some of that onto the models. And I was like, oh my God, I hadn't thought about that. I need to make a display board. And if anyone was going to inspire me, I think it's the guy that took inspiration from my list, Smash and Bash, to go 4 1 with his Karazai list. So uh, thank you, David, for kind of giving me a flash of inspiration for my own display board. You're really going to do a display board this time? Yes, I'm going to do a display board, and maybe in the hobby stream, I'll talk about the head cannon for my Stormcast army. I don't know. So, Lex, um, I'm going to let you take away with the next question. Go. Oh, what was the most memorable or enjoyable moment this weekend, in and out, or in game or out of game? Who do you want to answer that question? Uh, let's go with Brian first. So my game four was against uh, Sun and one of the original Sons of Slambo members, Jimmy Sides. Uh, he was also running Giants, uh, playing a prod stomp. Um, and we were almost identical, except he had a war stomper. But uh, through the course of the game, I ended up basically edging ahead of him. Uh, but in the course between turn three and turn four, uh, he managed to corner my King Broad, bring him down only uh, with his King Broad, which was the last remaining model, only to be surrounded by my three remaining Gargants to be brought down with a uh, uh, like a smashing strike for 46 mortal wounds, where I did about 27 mortal wounds to him. Uh, so they, you know, the King is dead. Long live the King. That's great. Now we'll go on to Randy. What did you like about it? Um, so there were a couple of memorable moments. Um, it's always kind of tickles my heart and saddens me a little bit when I make Eli rage. Um, so that's always a memorable moment. Um, but uh, I love you, Eli. Uh, I think uh, for me, I, I going into round three, I had a time constraint. I had a hard stop, and the round was starting a little bit late. And I get Isaac, and it's a terrible matchup for me. It's absolutely awful. I, I, I don't think I can win this game nine out of ten times. And so with that said, uh, I, I just threw all my stuff on the, front, on the front line, 18 inches away from him. He saw exactly what I was doing, and he's like, I'm far enough away. And he says, take the turn. And then my dice decided that they were going to um, uh, start a revolution, their own country, maybe their own religion. And I made all my charges, and his army was just gone. Um, it was memorable and painful at the same time because it's not how I wanted to play that game. But it was such a uh, an explosive moment that it's it stands out of everything else that happened at that tournament. Was just this: you take this healthy dose of fuck it all and just throw everything on the line and charge. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 I have zero regrets. Full send on on the top of one. You don't see that a whole lot in AOS anymore. Um, it doesn't lead to some of the best feels in a game, but it's always, uh, it's like, no matter what, we're getting fireworks. 
Yeah, that was pretty funny because you were like, I feel so bad that I just smashed Isaac really fast and was like, peace out, buddy. Walking Isaac after that game, he just kind of had a thousand yard stare. Yes, he did. He looked like he'd got shell shocks. <laughs> Dropped the bomb and left. <laughs> yeah, there's not many times you're going to see somebody send Kragnos into the Shadow Queen on turn one intentionally. Yeah, no, that's how you lose a Kragnos. Ragnos walked away from that. Unbelievably. Chris, what about you? Well, I had already mentioned earlier, I guess I had, uh, this is one I spoiled a little bit. It was that moment of uh, of, of chucking uh, Eli's star engine, or uh, a realm shaper engine for sure. Um, to give it a little more context so that we had played one other time in this GHB early on. Multiple Gargants got, Gargants got trapped behind impassable terrain and got taken out of the game. He killed half a Gargant with a with a merciless lizard. It was just it was you know just took me apart. So in this game, you know, I mitigate half the half the merciless lizard with my with my word save artifact. You know, chunk his impossible straight at him, try to kill him. It was like ah, I can't bully him anymore, frog. That was, that was pretty good. Look at me, I'm the bully now. <laughs> the pig, the sexy lady pig. Uh, that reminds me of when the Lord of the Dragons was joking in the Elias, uh, his role of Jerry Turner, that was one of those moments. Is it time right now? As, uh, we all love talking guys, about the Peanut Buddy Elias, let's, let's, uh, let's keep, keep it moving forward. Hey, guys, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we are getting a bunch of static here on the stream, so give me one second to see if I can figure out what's going on, and, uh, hold tight, all right? All right. Um, what about now? Yeah, it says we're good. Okay, so we're looking good. Everything's fine. Let's get a quick bike check from the guests real quick. Pretty yeeny. Yep, yep. All right. And do I still sound good? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you for bearing with us, guys. Um, Dimitri, why don't you finish off uh, Lexi's question with most memorable moment? Well, despite dropping 10 Mega Gargans over the weekend, which was quite a feat, that was fun. After that first GHB where I got bullied for so long, <laughs> when I played Hidden Knights of Slanesh and they had all those bonus monster points. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say that'd be the the barbecue we had I don't know, Saturday night, so outside the game, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with many of the well knobs, uh, that was fun. You know, we don't we don't hang out enough, and I haven't been hanging out lately a lot, so that was that was great. That was lots of fun. Yeah, being yeah. able to hang out after the a GT and unwind with guys I haven't seen in a bit, talk to them, and like share food. That was great. Yeah, let uh, <clears throat> let's take a moment to kind of piggyback off of that. We have uh, members from every community kind of with us in chat now. Um, the Weird Knobs rented out a Airbnb, and I think we stuffed like 10 of us in that house. And after it was all said and done, I think everyone owed like 90 bucks for the weekend uh, for, <clears throat> for housing. And Saturday after the event, we went out, grabbed uh, about $150 worth of food, grilled and stayed up till almost 12 one o'clock in the morning with a few drinks and that is absolutely the way to do gts from now on hey i don't want to do a gt any other way than that so talk uh talk amongst yourselves talk to your community leaders and really look to uh kind of getting your uh your whole city up in one house if you can because hotels just aren't going to cut it you know, we could just have it during the GT, you know. Well, maybe. All right. Mm. See, Houston's got it, and maybe we stole that idea from Houston, but I don't know. I'll gladly say we uh, we kind of joint did it. If 
if that's right. what you want to think. <laughs> so I'm going to ask one more question myself, and then I'm going to let Lexi kind of finish off a few more questions for you guys. So when we go to GTs, we get to play five games, but if we're really lucky, we get to make five new friends. And a lot of my GTs, I end up kind of playing some of the people that <clears throat> I play at locals or I kind of consistently play. Did any of you guys get to play someone new and make a new friend this weekend? And uh, Dimitri, I'll let you start this one off. Yeah, no, I was I was lucky that I didn't get to play anybody from Austin. And mm -hmm. so I played two new person i'd never played mm -hmm. and three person i'd played from our our clubs that mm -hmm. i don't play that often so it was it was great and you know all all great great games no that's awesome um it's honestly you might be one of the luckiest ones here if you didn't have to play anyone from austin uh a couple of us we're not going to name names uh we're laying down tombstones like walking blocks so let's jump over to Brian. Brian, did you make any new friends? I made five new friends. Uh, so I was very lucky that I didn't have to step on the necks of any uh, fellow weird knobs. I played, let's see, two guys from Houston and then three uh, individuals that hail from Sons of Slambo. So okay. Devin Courtney, he is, I think he's uh, one of the Conroe guys. Um, I think I have that right. Uh, he was great. Love playing him. Um, prior to us uh, rolling for round one, Jeff leans over and looks at my army and, and said, ugh, broad stomp, and looked at Devin straight in the eyes like, kick his ass. I want him to lose. And that kicked off a blood curse that carried on to game two. That had me walking up into game two begging uh, Jeff to please take it back. Uh, I've never rolled so poorly in a game yet had so much uh, fun watching Big Wall take me apart. Did my heart proud. But when you have everything in your army into squishy targets round uh, turn two, and you only do four damage total, it's a big kick in the pants. Uh, I've got Chris Creech, and never I, I only knew him by reputation, never actually played him. Uh, he took me to to school, and I had a lot of fun with him. Uh, so we had a good time. Game three was Caesar Garcia. Uh, he is out from Laredo, recently moved to San Antonio, and it was his first GT. Uh, and I got to get a little revenge, seeing that he had a list that was very similar to Chris's. Uh, I may have bullied him a little bit, um, but he put up a good fight. He did his best, but um, Giants do be good. Uh, game four was a lot of fun. I got to play Jimmy Sides. I played him before um, a while back, but uh, never played his Giants before. So I got to continue my streak of beating up on Giant players, undefeated in that regard, which is what's important to me, at least. Uh, and then Mark Johnson, I finished out, uh, the, he was playing KO. He had more of a assault-based KO list, which is really cool to see. And my God, that that guy can uh, shit talk with the best of them. Uh, so we had a good time. Um, I completely smashed him, felt a little bad about it. Uh, people walking over like, Brian, why, why are you beating up a 14-year-old? Don't know. But it was good times. Uh, I think all, uh, all my opponents had a good time. Um, I had a good time. That's what's important. It's good stuff. All right. So, <clears throat> Randy, um, did you make any new friends this weekend? I played some awesome people this weekend. Um, yeah. Um, uh, I knew everybody I played. Um, I'd never played Nina before. Um, what who I got in round one, uh, and like, I, but I've known Nina. She's shown up for tournaments for a couple of years. I've always seen her paint and always said hi. Um, uh, so that was that was fun to actually get to play somebody I don't regularly get to play. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and then you know I may have put a couple weird knobs in the ground, and um, and then I had to play Nick Nick Swoop. And uh, Nick and I have played before at some San Antonio locals, and they were always fun games. And I remember whenever he was just kind of getting started with that Celeste Army, we talked about it a little bit. And uh, and so uh, 
it was uh it, it was a fun game it's so, so a lot of stuff i don't get to see around then i rarely get to play slanesh because dimitri never brings it out um uh so that was that that was fun i had to play it twice um and uh you know cal and i have a history it was like we played at gts before and at locals before so it was uh well, we kind of knew what we were getting into at the beginning of that game. Uh, so uh, I, I think part of it is just I play so much and at all the GTs, and I've, I've kind of done the rounds a couple of times, but the games are always fun. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like to don't, don't think about new friends, just re-upping uh, existing relationships. Okay. Yeah. yeah, definitely setting up the rivalries there. Well, uh, I haven't beaten Kel yet, so he's on my list now. I have, start tre- I have to start treating him like I treat Creech. Just All grudge right. him next time. Get it over with. No, no, no. That's no fun. Yeah, like, save that for five Joe. days. So, what about you, Chris? Um, you're a pretty veteran player. Did you get a chance to make any new friends this weekend? Yeah, I played against two folks I already knew, uh, our own Eli and then uh, and then Ben, I think Houston and College Station guy. Um, and then I played three new folks, uh, two Slambos and uh, and Rick down from WAC, down from Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, got two favorite opponent votes for sports. So uh, yeah, it was it was it was a you know, we had some some fun games. Um, I, I played. I also played against uh, Mark that Brian played against. So uh, shout out to him because uh, I understand why he was salty game five because he had just played my broad stomp. That's game right. Four. Yeah. And uh, those were his second and third games against Gargants ever, and uh, it was a little bit of trial by fire for him there. So uh, he he deserved to be person there by the end of that. I think. Uh, so the uh, the old Gargant special of suplex into chokehold. I love it. God. He got done double dirty. We don't dirty. even get that. We're broad stomp. We don't get just two bucks into chokehold. Oh, rip. Look, all I'm going to say is he uh, he deployed on the line to bait me uh, to go for a for turn one charge. So I went for it. Of six inches away, he deployed six inches back uh, to get, make me have an 11-inch charge. And I rolled like a four the first time. You re-rolled that st- thing into an 11. And the look on his face, I saw the color drain. Uh, so he... Uh, he took it well. He talked. He uh, he held his own throughout the game. I was very impressed. Nice. Um, I'm going to jump in on this one at the end. I uh, I played against two new players. I've got I've never got a chance to play for them. Um, I got to play against Rick from WAC and his sharks. That Those was a pretty uh, sharks. Yeah, it was a very interesting game, and I got to play against Ty Tran. One of the uh, Slambo guys. I don't know if he's new. He is. But, well, I think he said he'd been playing for a long time. But this was his first time coming out to, like, a big GT event. So, awesome that he's coming out to GTs. Unfortunate that he had to play my filth. So, I just want to shout out to Ty for being a great opponent. Uh, With the exception of the, uh, the two games I lost, no one had much fun this weekend playing against me. So let's uh, let's let Lexi take it away and kind of bring us to a close for the stream. Uh, I think you have two more questions for yeah. them, Lex? I sure do. So what did you all think of the raffle? Did you put anything in? I'll start with Chris. Oh. oh, I mean, I think the raffle's great. I mean, I think it's great that we raised so much for, for charity and everything. Um, I personally, through no particular philosophical reason, don't really do any games of chance, so I didn't go into the raffle, but I think it's great, and it's amazing that we raised so much money. Uh, Yeah. Um, I believe Dan announced it was over $11,000 for the Shiner's um, Children's Hospital, specifically for the transportation of uh, burn victims, and I think it was Mostly like life flights for like burn victims, and you know we we at least raise enough money for uh, two needy kids to get where they need to go. <clears throat> so, Dimitri, we'll let you uh, continue on with the questions. Yes, yeah, so I put um, I don't know. I bought like forty dollars worth of ticket, and I put all of it into. Uh, I think the first box they were drawing, so trying to add my bet something that we're. 
really be a lot of tickets in it, not uh, Dan's army. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I got some. Uh, I got some sleeves. I want some sleeves. Nice. <laughs> oh my god. But that, uh... Uh, yeah, no. I mean, great. I mean, uh, it, great from Dan. You know, matching, matching five thousand up to five thousand dollars on on now donation. So great, great gist. I mean, yeah. uh, great. Yeah, this was um, not like not to sunlight Dan or you know, but this was kind of his stepping down from running GT's kind of finale. So him and Jody Stubblefield. Uh, decided that they were going to match charitable donations from the community uh, up to five thousand dollars, and that's how we were able to raise so much money for kids this weekend. But speaking of that first box, Dimitri, that was insufferable. Trying to raffle through it, watching those like same guys like get the charity every time. It was that, uh, was, that was Mark yeah, Johnson yeah. and his little brother that we're talking about. Oh, Apparently, all you had to do was put a hundred dollars off of tickets, and you'd win everything. Right? I didn't work that for me. Guy. Yeah, that's what right. he did. Yep. All right. So we'll uh, we'll continue on over to Brian. I mean, I, Slambo, they always raise a, t- a tremendous amount of money. Um, everyone loves the Slambo events. Um, they're always a lot of fun. There is always that air of uh, just kind of cutting loose and not taking the game quite as seriously. Uh, and you combine that with beer and like amazing raffle prizes on top of just being able to support the kids with the Shriners Foundation, uh, mm-hmm. which is a fantastic charity. I believe they were telling us that they that our money specifically was going towards the transport uh, of children suffering from uh, burns. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that's amazing. Um, that's something I can support. Uh, you know, it allows me to be a little more proud that I'm playing. A hobby of basically plastic soldiers is when I can play plastic soldiers and also do good. So it's always nice. I applaud uh, Sun Slambo for putting on an event like this where they can use our hobby to do to put some good in the world. Yeah, no, that was the the charitable donations and the kind of shoot for the stars thing. I think Lexi, how much uh, how much did you end up spending and what did you spend it on? You don't want to know. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you because Chad's here. <laughs> but it was quite a bit. But I was excited that they doubled it. So that's all that mattered. Uh, no. Uh, with the help of Jody and Dan, uh, this household put quite a bit of money in those boxes. Um, I believe Lexi was going for the gits. And uh, while we didn't win it, I don't remember the name of the uh, the kid that won it, but man, was he excited to win it. And uh, I was excited for him to win it. So, all right, Randy. You look, Harley, yes, Harley. That guy, good energy. Hope to see him at more events. Um, Randy, you're big into charity. You like to support charities. What'd you do? Uh, I put a hundred bucks in there. Uh, I kind of spread it out all over the place. Um, I, I, I already used all my uh, raffle karma last year when I won that set of painted terrain, so uh, I wasn't uh, I wasn't needing to win anything. But you know, um, anytime I can give to children's charities, I will do so. Um, you know, without fail. And you know, I really, really like it whenever the AOS community runs charity events. I think we're pushing plastic dollies around on the table, and that's always kind of uses a tongue in cheek joke to. Um, you know, promote sportsmanship, but it's such an absurd thing for middle-aged men to do and women to do that if we're going to do it, we might as well do it for charity. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm a huge proponent of playing games for charity. Um, if you ever go to like any of the, uh, the big online Twitch charity streams, I'm always on there given as much as I can. And I'm sorry, I got a big giant attention seeking cat on my desk right now. You may have seen his butt. Sorry. That's a beautiful no. kitty. All right, Lex. What's next? All right. The last question here. Any suggestions for the TOs for next year? Well, considering Dan's stepping down, that means it's probably Tyler and Rutherford, right? Doing it? Yeah, we'll uh, we'll end up seeing Tyler, Ryan Rutherford, uh, Jimmy. I 
a blanket on other like community leaders at Slambo at the moment. I think they're still trying to uh, feel out their community. Um, they're pulling a new the the, the old blood. It's kind of t- starting to take a step back, and they're starting to bring in new blood. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, primarily you're going to see Jimmy, Ryan Rutherford, and uh, Tyler. Yeah. All right. So, Lexi, who do you want to start for the? Uh, who do you want to start for the questions? Well, I know the answer, so we'll go to Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think the event was run extremely well. Um, there was minimal time delays. Um, the judges were very good at ensuring that rules were being followed. Ryan was everywhere. He caught, like, every, every time players were just, like, anytime phones came out to look up a rule, he was like a, uh, like, it was like a, a alarm went off in his head and he was just there. As soon as he saw somebody looking at a phone, he was there trying to figure out what it was that they were looking up so he could make sure we got it right. Uh, and, you know, he corrected actions at the tables that I was playing at a couple of times, both for me and against me. So it was uh, mm-hmm. it was good to see professional level judging. Um, it's rare to see that at big GTs, um, usually because they're understaffed. Uh, I know uh, we kind of set it up with, uh, with Robish at uh, Smash and Bash last year or this year. And, uh, you know, it felt very much like I was at an event like LBO where there's always a judge available and that was amazing. Um, and definitely keep doing that, um, for additional feedback, um, uh, try to get the pack out earlier, but that's always one that's that people, you can never have the pack soon enough. Um, and I would really encourage them to, you know, uh, this is a contentious GHB we're in right now and they stepped out of the GHB to some extent. Full send guys, give us, Give us your own take on the game. You don't don't be beholden to a G to to a GHB. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the tournament we want to see the wacky shit come out, mm-hmm. um, and go for it. No, that's that's great feedback and uh, really pushing them to kind of lead into what they do best. It's yeah, slambo. It's, Give me a reason to shout it. It's late edition. Let's embrace the silly. Right. Ooh. All right, Chris. You're a you're a seasoned veteran of gts what uh do you got any feedback that we could give the sons i mean honestly uh you know speaking of being a seasoned veteran i think this tournament as far as the balance between kind of like the rules pack the venue how it was run during the event uh i really have no complaints it was it was excellent uh excellently run event um no notes honestly okay wonderful that honestly that's great feedback as well. What about uh, what about down to you, Dimitri? Did you notice anything you'd want to shout out or any suggestions you'd want to give? I mean, it was very well run. You know, I love to go to see our progress, Sons of Sambo. Uh, they did a great job, Tyler and and Ryan and mm-hmm. and Dan and Jimmy. Uh, mm-hmm. I've had like two two little things. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of the less than three hour round. Mm-hmm. Um, that drives that drives my list build. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't necessarily bring what I want. I bring what I can play and finish a game in two hours. And this time was forty minutes mm-hmm. instead of three hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and another thing was uh, there was a there was a change in the pack, and there was no no notification outside of the of Discord. Mm-hmm. So I found out uh, during the game. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, that's that's all great feedback as well, Dimitri. Uh, thank you. Whatever. Uh, what about over to you, Brian? Your first GT back in a while. How did it feel? Did you think they could have done anything better? I mean, it was it was a really well done run event. Uh, it was pretty professional. Um, I don't really have any feedback for them. I, I think I would echo Dimitri's um, sentiments there. Uh, I also don't know if there was a. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was there a? Uh, centralized discord for the tournament yeah uh they did get a slambo server up where they had essentially their pack like the judges ruling and then kind of their update on scheduling and packs fantastic because i know what's dimitri is mentioning like he was running off an old pack that he had wasn't aware that there was an update Mm -hmm. um so making sure something like that in a discord is made known uh can definitely be helpful but it's only minor criticism i think they did fine 
Yeah, no, um, I think my only my only suggestions for the event was if I'm going to be really critical, would be pushing the event more than they did. Um, at least here in our server over here in Austin, I think there was only two or three pushes that tagged everyone about Slambo. So making sure everyone knows about it uh, much more consistently and, you know, kind of with a bigger lead up to it. Cause I was like, Oh, Slambo, when's that? And then i completely forgot about it. And then, you know, the three hour round thing, I would, uh, I'd much rather wake up a little earlier, stay a little bit later to make sure I get my three hours of tournament GT play. Uh, Cause there was, there were two games where I was kind of stressing there in the last, you know, 20, 30 minutes of the game. Cause I was like, I don't know if I'm going to have to talk through this or not. Yeah, you don't want to be in a position, especially like game five, of having to talk through your game because you just ran out of time. Uh, yeah. And it, it's even with this G, with this particular pack, uh, things just move slowly because you have an extra step where you have to roll for primal dice. You have to figure that out. You have to tally up. Well, did I kill an Andorian locust? Like there's a lot of little extra things going on in this particular uh, pack that requires a little bit more time that you need those longer rounds. Yeah, it's... uh. Game three, I think, is really important. You know, if you're if you're two and zero oh going into game three, you want to make sure you have as much time available to you because the 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 quality of opponent between going into day two with a three zero oh versus a two one, uh, you really want to make sure you have all the time available for that. All right, so this kind of concludes everything that we prepared. Um, I know over here in chat, did any of you guys have any uh, questions in chat that you wanted to ask our guests? And in future uh, in uh, future stream recaps, I'll make sure to kind of uh, prep that. Um, guys, how was the food? It was mall food. It was okay. Uh, later on at the uh, Airbnb, food was great. That's right. because you helped cook it. Hey, that uh, that Chinese place in the mall goes pretty hard. I think their uh, their general sows and their like grilled kind of teriyaki chicken. I really like. There's the bourbon. I think it's the bourbon. The bourbon chicken. It's a mall uh, Chinese food staple. Right, the bourbon chicken. So I gotta say, Slaneshi was sweeter than I thought it was going to be. Um. Frog legs are always frog legs. I've, I've fried them a couple of times. Um, we had some frickin' seaweed uh, bundo. Um, very tasty, very tasty, very tender. A little bit of salt. Uh, tastes the sea a little bit. Um, and, uh, man, ghosts just have no flavor at all. Um, but a big shout-out to Nina, who was playing Slanesh, who was giving out candy. But she wasn't just giving out candy. She was giving out Lindor's truffles. That's some high-class candy right there. So, yeah. how are you supposed to say no to depravity? Which is like, you want a candy? Well, I had, I had, was ill and I couldn't have any sugar. And she's putting my favorite confection right in front of me and I can't eat it. <laughs> and I will say this I did not accept any Slanesh candy across two games, not a single one. <laughs> Starved them. I, I kept poor Nick on 35 depravity for two turns. That's not the way to do it. I think I got tie up to like high 30s, almost into the 40s. Oh, he was so frustrated. He's just like, are you going to shoot me? And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to shoot you. <laughs> it's, I mean, you're not getting any more depravity out of me. All right. Um, <clears throat> man in the chair. Let's go, to our, uh, let's go to our exit screen so we can talk about it for a second. While we uh, while he gets that sorted out, uh, thank all four of you for joining us. Um, we want to make sure as we start to get our feet under us here at the Weird Cast that we uh, include more members of the community. Uh, that include that that means here locally, North and South Austin. And as we start to kind of get this hammered out and a little bit more polished, we want to make sure to grab guys from San Antonio, Houston. Dallas, and if we're lucky, we can start getting people that come in from out of town to these as well. So, big shout out to all four of you here. We uh, 
couldn't have done this without you guys. Or at the very least, it would have been way more boring if it wasn't for y'all. Thanks for having us. Yeah. I was always happy to be here. And thank you, Joe. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you, Grot in the chair. Yeah, thanks, y'all. All right. Um, <clears throat> so that's that. Uh, we want to talk about what we have planned for Thursday. Um, Thursday is going to be a really big stream for us. It's uh, we've been grinding here hard uh, at the Weird Cast, working uh, towards hitting affiliate with Twitch, and because of all the support from the communities, we have met all of the metrics except total streams in a rolling thirty-day period. So this Thursday, uh, Jeff is going to teach us and help us hit um, better terrain. So we're going to be doing a hobby terrain. Jeff Fiskaius is going to be doing uh, some hills to kind of help people build out boards, um, fill up their own house tables or their hobby tables at their stores. Or uh, this can be used for bases for like larger models and such. So it'll be me, it'll be Jeff. We may have a couple other people here um, just kind of talking, but it's mostly going to be just a sit down, chill hobby stream where we're going to be asking questions, talking about our hobby lives, and uh, learning a little bit from someone that's been doing uh, terrain building um, for, you know, 20 years now. So. Thank you, everyone, for coming out and spending this time with us. Um, I hope it was everything that you guys wanted or at least was expecting. And until next time, um, you can uh, keep track with us over on Twitter at the Weird Cast at Twitter. I don't know, X, whatever we want to call it. So thank you, guys. Love you, guys. We're getting out of here. Lexi, you got anything you wanted to add to this before we're going? Well, Lexi handed me the headset, so uh, what we've actually got is uh, also our YouTube channel, The Weirdcast, and I think those are all of our socials that we should be plugging, and we're real excited to see you guys this coming Thursday. All right, guys. Take care. Be safe. Until next time. Bye, guys.